The World Seafood Congress 2015 is sponsored by Seafish. Hello and welcome to the final day of our special live coverage looking at the World Seafood Congress coming to you live from the Grimsby Institute. The event happens every two years and this year it's here at the premier fish processing town of the UK, Grimsby. And as the conference closes and empties, joining me in the studio tonight to discuss what's happened are Tom Pickerell from Seafish, Nigel Edwards from Icelandic Sea Chill and Kerry Bonnell from the IAFI. Hello to all of you. So yesterday was the middle day of this big three-day event and it had some big names attending the town. Seeing as some really prominent people were attending, we wanted to see who we could interview and we ended up speaking to the one and only Sir Ranulf Fiennes and here's what he had to say. Now you've done so many different expeditions but what is that feeling like just before you set off on one? Well it obviously depends over 40 years which particular world record the team is aiming to try and break. And we always know that we have um, competition, other people wanting to break the same thing, which in terms of Grim Grimsby is the next door neighbours in Norway. They are the main rivals and always have been. And so there is a constant looking over your shoulder before the expedition begins. And they will be doing it at the same time of year, the same season, because that's what the ice dictates and you've got to leave with sponsorship because we never um, have anybody who has money and therefore everything is sponsored and one expedition had 1900 sponsors. Now as we were saying you've done so many different expeditions has there ever been a moment in which you've genuinely feared for your safety? Uh, over 40 years there have been periods of anxiety one which I just happened to remember at the moment was um, looking for a lost city in the biggest uh, sand desert in the world, in Arabia. Um, we got dropped off by a helicopter somewhere in the desert because the police helicopter suddenly got called away and they dropped us off in the desert. We'll be back in an hour. Four hours later they weren't back, we had no communication. If they had crashed or been shot down, it was a war situation, nobody would have ever found us and we that sunk in and we realised it, so we had a very anxious three hours. And that was me speaking to Sir Ranulf Fiennes last night. Now, all of you, of course, will have seen his quite inspiring speech, I'm sure. Um, Tom, I don't know if you wanted to give us sort of your reflections on what he had to say. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, we invited uh, Sir Ran to come to the event to talk about motivation, because obviously that plays such an important part in his expeditions. Uh, but in a way, it, that was very much eclipsed by his, his sense of humour and just the, the, the sheer depth of stories he could tell us about what he achieved in his life. It's like he lived five lifetimes. I know certainly when I was speaking to him sort of after the interview, he wasn't in any kind of rush to sort of disappear or go and, go and mingle with people. He was actually just speaking to us, have, you know, a, a wealth of stories. Nigel, I don't know if you wanted to sort of reflect on this as well. Certainly, I, I, I had a, a brief conversation with him. He's really engaging and really interested to talk to us about what we were doing here and learning about the fish and the fish industry. And he, he climbed Everest with a Grimsby man. So it was yes, an amazing of experience. Of course. And to just talk to him about that. And he said, but I didn't quite make it that time because I had a heart attack just before the, the summit. So, and just left it there. <laughs> <laughs> he did have quite a yeah. dry sense of humour, I believe yes. is probably the correct word. <laughs> Kerry, what, what, what did you make of it? Well, I struggled to follow the dry sense of humour <laughs> being the Canadian in the room, but I, I did have a chance to have a conversation with him uh, um, at the end of the night and compared stories, I guess, on the Canadian perspective, given his time in the Canadian Arctic. I actually lived and worked uh, and on Baffin Island in the Canadian Arctic, working with the Aboriginal community to start my career. So we had a good conversation on his exchanges with the Inuit community from his journey throughout the, uh, the Northwest Passage. So I, I must say it was, a, it was a fascinating evening, great. Great session, great presentation. He's certainly a very, very inspiring man. Now, Nigel, I'm just going to start um, just with our sort of main topics this evening. Yeah. Upskilling. Everyone's been talking about upskilling. Just I mean, we we kind of touched about what it touched upon what it was about last night. So tell me sort of what it is from your perspective. Well, I I, I had to give a presentation about the bigger picture and what we have to to learn about. In um, we were 
introduced to the well, well, what what um, changes are happening over the next ten years and what we would need to be prepared for uh, today in some of the main sessions. So I spoke about the the multitude of factors you're dealing with sustainability, you're dealing with ethics, you're dealing with authenticity, and so that means the chemistry and the uh, analytical work that goes behind. You have to become a very general both scientist, politician and uh, to some extent an environmentalist yourself. You know, we, we feel like we are um, um, an environmental group sometimes in, in our campaigning for the, the oceans to be sustainable. And it's quite a new topic really, isn't it? It's something which sort of may not have been necessarily discussed as much before now. Certainly the last... Um, throughout my career it's progressed and we've gone from talking about having enough fish to having sustainable oceans. To, uh, then we've more recently uh, been bringing in um, stopping illegal fishing and bringing ethical standards, uh, just looking after the fishermen uh, globally that supply our supply chains and actually caring for them and then moving into this um, work to uh, stop fraud in food, uh, which we are uh, obviously very focused at doing. Now Tom, just changing the subject slightly. Um, it must be so great for Seafish to host this event on their home territory. Absolutely. For us, this is, this is like securing the Olympics. You, know, you, have to, you have to go and put yourself forward uh, to, um, to be considered for it, and you have to demonstrate that you can t pull it off, you can do a good job. Uh, we did that. We've had two-year build-up for it. It's been, uh, it's been hugely challenging to make sure we, um, we can make everyone's expectations met. Uh, but absolutely delighted. The, the venue's been super. Uh, we, you know, we, we really wanted to do this in Grimsby, to, to put Grimsby back on the map, uh, back on the seafood map where it belongs. And I think we've achieved it. Now, how much preparation went into I mean, obviously it's a biannual event. You kind of said for the past two years you've been, you've been doing stuff. How much work really does go into this? Because, I mean, I've seen delegates from all over the world, obviously for the World Seafood Congress, but some, some of us may not necessarily appreciate just how much effort goes into this. Uh, yeah, I mean, to just give you an idea, it was 277 delegates, uh, 149 from the UK. So the rest of the delegates were from around the world, and it really was a, a really good distribution of people from all across the world. Uh, we had uh, you know, a team, internal team working on this, pulled together the program, uh, over a hundred speakers. You can imagine that takes a lot of work, getting an interesting program of people from around the world, pull it together, yeah, considerable amount of work, but well worth it. Now, Kerry, tell me a little bit about your area ex of expertise. Where, where have you come into this program? Yes, yeah, so my background, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from a fishing family, actually, in Newfoundland. So an interesting story is I, I actually graduated high school the year of the ground fish moratorium, the cod moratorium. Oh, okay. My family were actually cod fishermen. So it sort of hit me early on, the issues we're discussing around mm -hmm. sustainability today. Those were the very early days. And obviously, much, of, much uh, key parts of the sustainability mo movement were built upon that historic collapse of, of ground mm -hmm. fish. So my family very quickly told me there was no future in the fishery mm. at that point. And they told me, no, you're, you can fish on the weekends, you can fish during the summer, but you're going to university, you're going to get an education. Mm. First generation in my family to get an education. But what did I do when I went to university? I studied fish because that's what I knew. So I've seen, to, to the point that was made, um, I, I see the sustainability movement in particular over the last three days and certainly the last couple of years really come full circle. I think collectively we've made major advances uh, on the sustainability mm. front. And, and how is trade between Canada and, and, and the, U well, the UK, but also Europe in general? Yeah. Well, well, the UK specifically, I would say from my province, Newfoundland and Labrador, one of our key species is cold water shrimp. So I think most of your viewing audience would have had a meal at some point. We all love shrimp. Last week. Everyone loves shrimp. Prawns, sorry, <laughs> prawns. Cold water shrimp we call them. Yes, prawns, that's right. So uh, we are the, probably the largest supplier, our province certainly in, in Canada, and, and one of the largest, in us in Greenland obviously being key suppliers. So a key part of our trade, and much of mm. our trade, is, is focused on the, on the UK, but Europe in general uh, is a key area. And what are the big challenges, in your opinion, between Canada and European trade? Is there anything which kind of concerns you, or any kind of big obstacles which may have to be faced? Well, I think one of the key issues right now is one that's going to be addressed. It's the Canada-EU uh, Comprehensive Trade Agreement. Um, so the Free Trade Agreement will look at the, uh, the re removal and, and elimination, uh, uh, gradual in some cases and, and, and immediately in others, of, uh, of prohibitive tariffs right now that put us in a bit of a competitive disadvantage in some ways. So with those changes, I see tremendous opportunity for further growth in trade between the two jurisdictions. And uh, that's something I think our industry 
is quite excited about over the next couple of years. So I think as a net importer of seafood, it's a tremendous opportunity, obviously, for the UK and the broader, the broader EU. For that. I know, obviously, on Monday it was mentioned that we might actually see more Canadian lobster, and I'm sure that's something which we would all be appreciating, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, a key point on that, on that very topic, um, Canadian lobster, uh, the, one of the issues we've been talking about is trade flow, and one of the things that's been happening over the past year or two in Canada we're seeing a lot of our lobster going into China with the emerging middle class societies there. So that's going to be a key dynamic and one we've discussed over the last couple of days, flow of trade over the next, uh, over the next period of time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you very much, my guests, but stay where you are and we'll be back with you in just a moment. The World Seafood Congress 2015 is sponsored by Seafish. The World Seafood Congress 2015 is sponsored by Seafish. Welcome back to this very special live show about the World Seafood Congress, coming to you from the Grimsby Institute right in the middle of Grimsby. Now, before the break, we showed you an excerpt of our interview with Sir Ranulph Fiennes, which you should keep watching out for a full broadcast date here on S3. But now I'm going to speak about a special presidential announcement. I believe one of you knows something about this. We're just going to have a look at a quick bit of video, and then we'll be back in the room. <laughs> All right, right. This time, let's congratulate the new president, Gary Barnett. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> now, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed who that was. It was, in fact, Kerry. Um, so tell us a little bit about how this nomination came about and what, what it now means for you. Well, um, uh, like Tom had indicated about the Seafish as the, as the host this year, uh, we actually hosted the World Seafood Congress in St. John's with my, my institute, uh, Memorial University, two years ago. So leading up to that, as, as Seafish did, we bid, uh, I think it was in Morocco in 19, sorry, in 2009 on the Congress and were awarded the 13th uh, Congress. So we were actually invited, or I was invited to participate as a member of the Board of Directors, uh, evolving into a role as on the Executive Committee uh, two years ago. And uh, was approached at that time, uh, I guess in part given the success of the event in St. John's to become President-elect. So, uh, which meant two years later, here in, in Grimsby, I'd be taking over. So. At the closing of the Congress, so luckily I had, didn't have a presidential role during the Congress, uh, I take over now. My responsibilities are planning for the right. next event. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, Nigel, you were saying to me during the ad break that actually you do quite a lot of work with, um, with Canada, obviously for, for with Icelandic Sea Chills. So yes. this, um, this is a great networking opportunity. It You're it sitting is, next uh, to the man involved. Uh, it is, and we, we met for the first time on Sunday evening, had a great conversation. I introduced you to our chief executive from Iceland, and we were very pleased to, to have the conversation. We're the largest importer of Canadian both cod and um, shrimp, as you yeah. call it, yeah, prawns right. for us. <laughs> and uh, we, that's creating employment in Canada and employment in Grimsby to produce really, I have to say, excellent quality pro Absolutely. products, especially the Absolutely. cod. Absolutely. Now, Kerry, what, what kind of difference are you hoping to make in, in terms of your sort of presidential ambitions? So, I mean, we're not talking sort of Donald Trump or no, Hillary Clinton no, or anything like that, no. are we? <laughs> 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 but obviously, you know, you, you, you're pretty, well, I mean, you're very important now. Well, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but, but um, one of the things I'd like to do certainly is, is grow the brand of the organization. I think uh, we had a really good Congress in, in 2011, uh, sorry, in 2013 in St. John's. 2015 has been great, just to echo uh, Tom's comments uh, earlier. It's, it's been wonderful, well organized. So we've got a bit of momentum as an organization. We have key partners in the FAO and UNIDO, some of the United Nations agencies. So we've got a network. My focus over the next two years is to really build upon that network and try to grow it leading into um, Iceland in 2017 and, and hopefully beyond into the developing world in 2018 we're looking at Vietnam as well so we're pretty excited about that. Now um, Tom talking about what's mm. been happening um, in terms of you know Canada and Iceland and moving on Wh what are the delegates made of Grimsby? I think they've been impressed um, they've certainly been impressed with the venue uh, and those that have uh, experienced uh, life outside the conference uh, I think they're very surprised that uh, Grimsby has so much history, and when you actually speak to them about it, tell them what uh, Grimsby is famous for, and how the industry's changed here, and how it is a, you know, the seafood capital, um, you know, arguably in Europe, uh, you know, very impressed. And I think people are going to go back home with, uh, you know, good memories, and actually tell people about the history. Uh, and our, you know, one of the things we'd like to do is to get Grimsby, like I say, back on the map. Now, of course, we wouldn't just be doing our job if we were just sat in this room. We've been speaking to people all the way through the event to see what they've made of it. Fantastic. For 
facility, great speakers, very interesting topics. Pumped up from me. This event has gone really well. The students have performed excellently over the four days. The reception on Sunday and the following three days has been terrific for them. But we've been very much involved in, in making sure that it runs very smoothly uh, over the last sort of um, three or four weeks prior to, to actually starting. The program's been solid. A really solid program. Grimsby to UK, so I enjoy it. The good people, good food, good everything. Now, Tom, um, the delegates have loved Grimsby, as we've just seen in that clip. Why Iceland? Why why Reykjavik? Well, Reykjavik is, uh, you know, obviously, Iceland is is a major fishing nation uh, in the world. Um, they've got a, a lot of heritage and history there as well, um, and I think it's good to to move the conference about to try to experience other cultures. I'm looking forward in the next one to see the debate continue moving on. I think sustainability is an area that has been covered a lot. I think there's a lot of tools out there already now. It's a case of implementing them. The next big challenge for us, that you know, the real hot issue, is one of ethics in seafood and sort of the social responsibility. Looking beyond the fish, looking at the people. Now we talked a bit about the networking available between Nigel and Kerry. Of course, you at Seafish, you must be able to meet people from all over the world who you, you may communicate with, of course, but you may never actually get to meet. So what are the networking opportunities like here? Networking is really key, so knowledge exchange, putting um, faces to names. Uh, there is a lot of conferences around the world in seafood in various niches and sometimes very, sub, you know, very specific subjects. But something as good as the Congress is it's very broad and you get people who are fish inspectors, technologists, scientists, managers coming together. And one of the advantages of this Congress is the fact you do get that breadth. So you're not just with the same sort of cohort of people. Now, Kerry, do we need to cooperate more in a sort of global marketplace? You know, are, are we looking at, obviously, you, you know an awful lot about trade. What, what do you think, uh, you know, what, what, what do you think of our current trade situation? I, I think when it comes to seafood, I, I don't think we're telling the story good enough when it comes to the issues around sustainability and the issues you know, just generally around trade and nutritional value and, and other things. So I think there's an opportunity collectively for us to tell a better story. I, I think we're performing. Uh, probably far better in many cases, whatever, whatever metric you use, whether it's sustainability or, or, or uh, issues around carbon footprint, energy consumption, and so on, uh, than many other food producing uh, uh, groups. So I think collectively there's an opportunity. One of the things we'll want to pay close attention to in the coming years, I think, is that flow of trade. And the EU is obviously by far the largest market right now collectively for seafood globally. I think about 25 billion, if I'm not mistaken, uh, value. But we have emerging economies in China, we have emerging economies in places like Vietnam and Indonesia. They've gone from places that we would normally, in some cases, send our food uh, for further processing in some cases to a place where we now market our seafood. And I think that's going to be an important trend as a group over the next several years, I think, to keep an eye on. So, Nigel, in terms of sustainability, there's always this sort of trade-off almost in that you're telling people that you want them to eat more seafood, but then you've also got to watch the amount of fish that are actually in the, in the ocean. So how do, how do we tackle that? Well, actually, this has been a great week of good news. We were able to announce at the beginning of the week that North Sea Cod is on the track for sustainability, and we, sh we hope to be able to get that certified to the Marine Stewardship Council standard in, a, in a, a year or so. That was a brilliant piece of news because that's iconic and so important for the, the UK uh, fishermen and the community. Um, but Yes, uh, it's about getting a balance and w our, the commitments of this big group of people and are certainly being led, um, in, in, the UK is a leader in sustainability um, and we've been able to bring some really good news to the, um, to the consumer to be able to say, look, um, you, it's actually fine to eat cod. <laughs> the, the cod from all over the world now, the Canadian cod's recovering rapidly, we're expecting good news of one of the Canadian fisheries to be certified to the MSC shortly. And uh, it's just been a, a more of a celebration, I would say, this last week. It hasn't felt like doom and gloom. It's felt like there's a, a very, very bright light um, of um, hope uh, for the industry as a whole. Um, just very quickly, what are the big themes coming uh, from, from this year's Congress and what do you expect to see going on into Iceland in 2017? Tom, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think social responsibility is going to be key. As Nigel rightly says, sustainability, things are getting better. The prospects are good, the outlook is good. There's still some areas that need attention, but social responsibility, that's the treatment of people 
that's going to be the key area. Mm. Um, Nigel? Well, I, I, I certainly add to that. I, I think it's, um, we are, we're moving to a stage where there's more cooperation globally and what we've been doing in the UK is being picked up around the world and it's that conversation, that, that, that uh, cooperation amongst people literally globally. It's been great. Kerry, we've got 10 seconds. Sure. Tell me quickly. Efficiency. I think efficiency is going to be a key issue going forward, particularly in developing world fisheries in terms of areas of looking at reducing post-harvest losses and making better use of our global resources. Okay. And of course, no major event like this would end without closing remarks. So here they are. Thanks to all our sponsors, particularly Seafish and Grimsby Institute. You flat out did a great job. Thank you. Okay, we now conclude the Ninth World Seafood Congress. I hope to see you in Iceland. That's all we've got time for on today's show, and indeed these special live broadcasts here on Estuary TV. Thank you very much to my guests, Tom, Nigel and Kerry. Thank you so much. I'm sure Thank we'll you. see you again you in future, future events. Stay tuned for the news coming up next. Until next time, good evening. The World Seafood Congress 2015 is sponsored by Seafish.